On this week's show, the Georgia Southern men and women's basketball teams wrap up their home schedule. We'll have highlights and analysis, and we'll also take you out to J.I. Clements, where the Georgia Southern baseball team gets the season underway. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Blue, white. Welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, we have basketball seasons wrapping up. We have baseball seasons getting underway. It's a couple good things to bring up, but also men's and women's golf going on. But let's begin on the hardwood. Georgia Southern's men and women both wrapped up their home schedules. They both still have four games left and they can go anywhere from first for the for the guys to probably sixth and for the women as high as third and maybe as low as tenth but there's some good news we'll begin with the women for a change and that is the fact that they wrapped up with a couple of big wins at home right georgia southern's ladies on a tear now over 500 in conference play this is where they envisioned themselves being when this season started it got off to a little bit of a rocky start but you can really tell how this young group has really molded together, kind of found their game as the season's gone along. And now they've got to finish it on the road and they're going to get their toughest test of the season to begin this road trip going to Little Rock. They're 13 and one right now in the conference. So definitely a tough test for the Eagles. But if they can win two of these last three games, I think that they're in a great spot to maybe not quite get to that bye, but they should have a a very favorable matchup, possibly a, a winnable game. It's been a a good long while since we've been able to say the Georgia Southern ladies have won a game in their conference tournament. Speaking of the four seed, it's important to be in those top four because you avoid having to play an extra game in the tournament. For the guys, they're right there on the bubble right now. They're the four tied right now for fourth in the league. And the rest of the games they have are on the road and they're against a few good teams as well. Really could have used that win against uh, UTA. Looked like they may have had a chance and then Wheels kind of fell off there in the second half. Your thoughts on where the guys are right now? Yeah, Monday night, a tough one against UT Arlington. Their first place in the conference for a reason. They were picked there preseason. That's where they are with a week and a half to go in conference play. And Georgia Southern really didn't do anything wrong Monday night. They just ran up against a team that was as hot shooting as they were. The offense, Coach Mark Byington, uh, said that the offense never let up all night. It's just the fact that it was the same uh, It was the same deal for UT Arlington. They continued to hit shots. They got a little bit of a run late in the game that the Eagles couldn't respond to. And much like the women have some big games coming up, this is where the men are really going to separate themselves as either a front runner, uh, a team that can make some noise in the conference tournament, or maybe a dangerous team that's going to have a lot more work to do because they've got a trip out to Arkansas. Arkansas State, one of the teams tied up there in the mix for the top four seeds, Georgia State their final game of the year. They're just behind Georgia Southern right now. And then uh, Little Rock, last year the conference champions, this year struggling. There's a chance to get a road win. That'd be important, but they've got to get at least one of the other two as well. All right, well, let's get out and take a look at some of the highlights from Saturday's and Monday's matchups. A doubleheader Saturday, the final home game for the Georgia Southern ladies as they host Texas State, trailing by 11 at the half. Texas State adding to their lead. Amber Jones, the hoop and the foul, but the Eagles storm back. Patrice Butler leading the charge. She hits the 15-footer. Angel McGowan next to Nicole Franks. Butler then with the turnaround in the lane. She finished the game with 24 points. Alexis Brown knows how to find the hot hand, and Butler does it again. Brown chipping in from long distance herself. As she buries the three-pointer, the lead cut to six. Next, it's Angel McGowan doing her thing in the paint, finding a way to get the bucket. She'd have 21, and the Eagles win 71 to 69. To the guys game we go, and unlike the ladies, the men in control in the first half. Jake Allsmiller for three. Devontae Boykins later will drive in for the hoop and the foul. Eagles up by nine. Texas State chipping away as Kevin Gilder Tilbury hits the three, but the Eagles respond. Ike Smith, three himself. War from Smith as he will hang in the air and makes it a nine point game. Monte Glenn chipping in with the nice jump hook in the lane. Back to Smith we go. 
and this time he finishes strong with authority. Ike with 17 points and almost all of them coming in the first half, including this three-pointer. Tukey Brown then heats up. He kisses this one high off the glass. Next, Tukey the pull-up three with the defender in his face. And finally, it's Tukey with the shake and bake. He's fouled, and the three goes up and in. He'd have 21, and the Eagles win 70 to 67. Georgia Southern men in their home finale as they host conference leading UT Arlington. This one back and forth in the first half. Tukey Brown finishing. Next off the steal, Ike Smith will go coast to coast for the layup. But the Mavericks answering. They go inside to Kevin Hervey. The Eagles right back as Mike Hughes spins and hits the three pointer. Back to Ike Smith we go, and he knocks down another three. He'd finish with a team high 27 points. Once again, here come the Mavericks inside to George Bilbo, the hoop and the foul. The Eagles again answering, tying things up as Smith hits the floater in the lane. Later on the break, Tukey Brown coming through with the hoop and the foul. He finished with 15 points. A little later, it's BJ Gladden somehow getting this one off the glass. The biggest problem for the Eagles coming on the glass, though, where they were out-rebounded 42-23. The Mavericks having 17 offensive rebounds. Just before the half, the Eagles playing beat the clock as Gladden somehow throws this one in. Georgia Southern on top by three at the half. Second half, the Mavericks pull away, hitting seven of nine three-pointers. Leading the way was Kevin Hervey with a career-best 28 and the Eagles fall 81-71. Well, next up, the women have Little Rock there on Thursday. The guys will play them on Monday, and then they both play a doubleheader with Arkansas State on Saturday. All right, well, let's move outdoors to the Georgia Southern baseball field, which looks great. The scoreboard, the new scoreboard, great. The big blue monster in right field is pretty exciting nice addition you got the manual scoreboard there it seems like everybody had a fun time this weekend and there were some exciting games for georgia southern as they took two out of three from middle tennessee then turned around and kind of laid an egg against georgia tech nationally ranked georgia tech but i guess that's going to happen from time to time your thoughts on the guys who sit right now at two and two well beginning the season against middle tennessee state a, a good team uh, much like the Eagles, a team that brought back pretty much everybody from last year's squad. Their record not the best last year, but they figured to be more improved this season. The Eagles figured to be improved this season. And uh, out, out of the gate, it was a little bit of a slow start for Georgia Southern. They forgot to bring the bats for about the first game and a half. They, they go to extra innings, drop a 6-5 game on opening night, although uh, the Eagles are only able to manage, I think, three hits in the first game and 10 innings. They turn around on Saturday, just two hits through the first six innings, but then they finally wake up, they rally, they give the fans something to cheer for, a four-run rally in the ninth, sends it to extra innings for a second consecutive game before a freshman, uh, Mason McWhorter, gets the walk-off hit, gets things going for Georgia Southern. They complete the uh, series win on Sunday, and then unfortunately, Georgia Tech, always a tough team, a great crowd, but you mentioned that manual scoreboard, a little bit too much work being put in on the visitors half of that against the Yellow Jackets. All right, well, let's get out and take a look at some highlights from the MTSU series and the single game with Georgia Tech. Georgia Southern Eagles getting the season underway, hosting MTSU under the lights at J.I. Clements. And the Eagles in trouble early on. MTSU with the strikeout to end the inning. In the third, GSU down two to nothing on the fielder's choice by Austin Dennis. Georgia Southern going to get that run back in the bottom half. Runner on for Ryan Cleveland, who sends the shot deep to left center. The double allows Evan McDonald to score to make it 2-1. Eagles going to tie things up in the fourth. Runner on third for Mitchell Golden, who lifts the fly ball deep enough to left to score Stephen Curry. This game will remain tied after nine in the tenth. MTSU wins it 6-5. We moved to Saturday and a nice plaque honoring Nate Hirsch installed prior to the season. The Eagles finding themselves in an early hole as MTSU would jump out to a 5-0 lead. 
Through six innings of play, the Eagle bats being held in check by Tyler Hasper, who allowed just two hits and struck out 11 in six innings. But the Eagles come back on the Blue Raider bullpen, 6-3 in the ninth, two, on, two out. Ryan Cleveland, the three-run triple. This would tie things at six all. And then in extra innings, freshman Mason McWhorter will provide the walk-off victory as he comes through with the base hit into right center. And the Eagles win a wild one by a final of seven to six. So to the rubber match Sunday we go. Chase Cohen looking solid early on. He'd have six strikeouts and only four innings of work. The Eagles drawing first blood. CJ Brazel helping things out with the single into left. Setting up runners on the corner for Logan Baldwin, who will single into right. Plating Mason McWhorter. Next up, Evan McDonald with the grounder to short. It's not fielded cleanly. Everybody's safe, and C.J. Brazel scores to make it 2 to nothing. The Eagles add a sack fly to make it 3 nothing. MTSU comes back, eventually tying it up at 3-all. But the Eagles come back themselves. Tyler Martin, the sack fly. Georgia Southern adds three in the seventh and wins eight to five. A beautiful Tuesday night at J.I. Clemens. And a nice start if you're a Georgia Tech fan. Top of the first, two on for Joey Bard, who lines one to left. This one gets down for a single. It's one to nothing. Moments later, Kyle McCann will poke one into shallow center field. That's going to plate the second yellow jacket run. It's two to nothing. Tech just getting started in the first. It's three nothing when Ryan Purifoy singles through the left side. And the error in left allows two more jackets to come in to make it five to nothing. Georgia Southern finally gets out of the inning. Zach Strickland with the inning ending strikeout. However, in the third, Georgia Tech adding to their advantage with one swing of Kale Johnson's bat. The laser shot over the left field fence makes it a six to nothing game. Georgia Southern's Seth Schumann from the football field to the mound in relief limits the damage with the inning ending strikeout. Home team trying to get the offense going, but Tech turning them away thanks to this diving grab, like this one by pitcher Ben Parr. However, in the fourth, the Eagles finally able to break the schneid. Couple on for C.J. Ballard, chops one up the middle, and it wouldn't be nearly enough. Tech wins this one 10-3. All right, well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.